How do we avoid corrosion and scaling of our water installations? How can we condition our water? How do we remove hardness from drinking water? Welcome at the lecture about conditioning and softening of drinking water. After this lecture, you will be able to explain the motivations for incorporating conditioning and softening into the drinking water treatment plant design, the principles underlying conditioning and softening processes, as well as which parameters affect the calcium carbonate equilibrium. For all drinking water production plants, care should be taken to obtain the calcium carbonate equilibrium to avoid scaling or corrosion of pipe material. For soft and desalinated waters, conditioning implies an increase in pH, bicarbonate and calcium concentration to sufficient levels. When water is too hard, thus having a high calcium and magnesium concentration, the water should be softened to avoid scaling of heating devices like coffee machines, dishwashers and washing machines to diminish staining of cloth and soap consumption. An additional advantage of softening is an increase in pH which diminishes uptake of heavy metals from internal piping material being a benefit for public health and the environment. What is the optimal water composition to avoid corrosion or scaling? The optimal water composition is with a pH between 7.5 and 8.5 and a calcium concentration between 0.5 and 1.25 millimol per liter depending on the magnesium concentration. This gives a total hardness of about 0.75 to 1.5 millimol per liter. Conditioning of the water is needed when the raw water isn't in the range of optimal water composition. When the raw water has a low hardness and low pH, it should be passed through a calcium carbonate filter to dissolve calcium and bicarbonate as well as to increase the pH. Furthermore, when the raw water has a sufficient hardness but a low pH, carbon dioxide should be stripped out of the water to increase the pH. Finally, when the water has a high hardness, the calcium concentration should be diminished and pH increased. In the Netherlands this is done by pellet softening. Conditioning with aeration is based on stripping carbon dioxide out of the water. To see the effect of stripping on water composition, the so-called Tillmans curve is used. Aggressive water that has an corrosive effect on pipe material will reach equilibrium when the concentration of carbon dioxide isn't too high and in equilibrium with the bicarbonate concentration, resulting in a point on Tillman's curve. Conditioning with limestone or marble filtration is based on the dissolution of calcium carbonate in water. This is only possible when sufficient carbon dioxide is available. Sometimes additional carbon dioxide dosing is required. Limestone filtration is performed in the same way as rapid scent filters are operated, even when the possibility for backwashing. However, due to the dissolution of the limestone, frequent addition of new material is needed. The dissolution of calcium carbonate with carbon dioxide results in the formation of two moles of bicarbonate per one mole of carbon dioxide, increasing the alkalinity and buffering capacity of the water and decreasing the aggressiveness, bringing the water into chemical equilibrium. From the raw water and clear water characteristics, it is possible to analyze what treatment was performed to condition the drinking water. In the example, the incoming water has a low pH and a low calcium and bicarbonate concentration. After treatment, the pH, the calcium concentration and bicarbonate concentration increased. This means that conditioning must have been performed with limestone filtration. When raw water is too hard, softening should be applied. Hardly hardness is mostly indicated in millimol per liter, but also equivalence per liter, German decrease, French decrease and equivalent concentration of calcium carbonate are used. 
as said before, the optimal hardness is between 0.75 and 1.5 millimol per liter. How is softening with pellet reactors performed? Pellet reactors consist of a fluidized bed reactor with seeding material, sand grains, where caustic soda, lime or soda ash is dosed. The increase in pH results in the formation of carbonate that crystallizes with calcium on the grains, the pellets. The resulting pellets are about 1 mm in diameter, are almost pure calcium carbonate and can be reused in industry or agriculture, avoiding the production of a waste stream. The consequence of using small sized seeding material is that the specific surface area for crystallization is high resulting in a rapid decrease in calcium concentration. Therefore the surface loading can be high up to 100 meters per hour and thus the reactor surface area relatively small. The high loadings are also needed to keep the grains and pellets in fluidization avoiding cementing of the pellets. Normally the pellet reactors are high, higher than 5 meters, to minimize supersaturation of calcium carbonate in the effluent of the reactor, creating problems in the downstream processes. In practice the remaining supersaturation is neutralized by a small acid dosing. The minimum achievable concentration of calcium in the effluent is about 0.5 millimol per liter. However, depending on the concentration of magnesium in the water, the required concentration of calcium can be up to 1.25 millimol per liter, leading to a total hardness of 1.5 millimol per liter, since magnesium isn't removed by the system. In that case, it is possible to treat only part of the raw water, so-called split treatment, and mix the treated water with the raw water. This, minimized, this minimizes the investment cost and can avoid the acid dosing for pH neutralization. Several chemicals can be used for the softening of raw water, caustic soda, lime and soda ash. In practice, mainly the first two are used. The advantage of caustic soda is that it is relatively easy to handle and reacts rapidly. The disadvantage, however, is that sodium is added to the water, which can be problematic in case of waters with a relatively high sodium concentration. Lime is more difficult to handle, reacts slower, leading to higher reactors and produces two times more pellets than caustic soda. Lime is therefore only used in case of waters with high sodium concentration and a high bicarbonate concentration, avoiding the production of low alkalinity waters. When water has a low alkalinity, so soda ash is used. Because with this chemical, the water can be softened without decrease of bicarbonate concentration. When lime or caustic soda is used for softening, two different reactions can take place. First, the water should be conditioned, reacting with the aggressive carbon dioxide, and then the softening process will take place. This means that the water is supersaturated with calcium carbonate and crystallization occurs, removing the calcium carbonate from the solution. These reactions can be visualized in the Tillman's curve. Several types of softening reactors are on the market. A common one is the Amsterdam reactor that has a flat bottom and is about 6 meter high. The reactor is designed for the dosing of caustic soda. In practice, different reactors are placed in parallel. This is to reduce the surface area of the individual reactors and to promote flexibility in operation. When the flow is varying because of seasonal fluctuations, more or less reactors can be put in operation. In addition, when maintenance of one of the reactors is needed, it can be taken out of operation without affecting the production of softened water. The most important part of the reactor is the bottom, where the water and chemicals are dosed and distributed over the reactor. When the dosing is evenly distributed, local supersaturation of calcium carbonate can be too high and spontaneous homogeneous crystallization can occur, clogging 
the reactor's bottom. Equal distribution of water flow is important as well to avoid short-circuiting and recirculation flows. In the bottom, a large amount of nozzles are placed to distribute the water and chemicals over the reactor. Each nozzle contains both a water and chemical flow stream outlet and is designed to create sufficient outflow turbulence to ensure good mixing between the water and chemical streams without clogging the nozzles. The softening reactors are rather high and the fluidized beds should be as high as possible to maximize crystallization surface. To avoid the washing out of the seeding material that is on the top of the bed, the reactor widens before the water flows over the effluent weir. In addition, washing out of seeding material should be diminished by avoiding rapid changes in water flow in the reactor. The pellets with crystallized calcium carbonate grow until sizes of about one millimeter and sink to the lower parts of the bed. There, they can be discharged and the gravity towards the pellet storage. When properly operated, the pellets are rather uniform. As said before, these pellets are mostly consisting of pure calcium carbonate with some traces of organic matter and or iron, giving the pellets a darker color. During storage, the excessive water is drained and afterwards the dried pellets are transported by trucks. Because of the pureness of the pellets, these can be used in industry and agriculture. Proper operation and maintenance of the pellet reactors is of utmost importance. When nozzles are clogged or when local excessive supersaturation of calcium carbonate takes place, even artificial stalagmites can be created in the reactor, of course disturbing the softening process and leading to intensive maintenance and repair activities. Thank you for your attention and I hope to see you again for the next lecture.